Oh, I can't wait for my parents to meet you tomorrow. I can't wait. Oh, my dad is a thermodynamicist at NASA. It's a whole thing. Bye. Hey, Meta, what the heck is a thermodynamicist? A thermodynamicist uses the principles of thermodynamics. But what is thermodynamics? Thermodynamics is the study of energy and heat transfer. OK, what? Hey, Meta, explain thermal balance. Thermal balance manages heat generation and dissipation in rockets. I thought that was for, like, freezing people's brains. In this case, cryogenic cooling systems are used to cool spacecraft components. So it optimizes fuel efficiency? Exactly. Got it. Now, teach me how to try a Windsor now. Nice to meet you, sir. Can't wait to pick your brain about the transition from liquid fuel to hybrid propellants. What? I sell insurance. What? <sighs> I'm kidding. Come on in. I'll tell you all about it. That'd be I'll nice. tell you later. Come on. Please welcome Meta Senior Engineering Director Ula Tordovakan. Good morning, everybody. Um, thank, it's great to be back here at OCP EMEA. Um, what you just saw, um, AI can be very helpful to all of us solving real life problems. And me um, could for sure. Uh, had benefited from AI the first time I met my father-in-law 35 years ago. So, hey, I'm Ola. So, um, uh, I'm going to talk uh, about Meta's approach to AI. Um, so, let's get started. So, at, at Meta, AI isn't just part of what we do. It's fundamental. It fuels every innovation, every interaction, and every experience that we create. And it's not new to us. Since the inception of our news feeds back in 2006, machine learning and AI have been the backbone of all our services and infrastructure. And today, it's foundational <coughs> to our family of apps, and it's integrated in to our vision, to our ge future generative AI products, and the metaverse, and our approach it's deeply rooted in openness. By sharing knowledge, sharing models, and sharing designs, we believe this accelerates innovation for everyone. And as we started um, the open source journey a few years back with Llama, we have seen a tremendous interest by researchers all over the world that have fine-tuned our Llama models for their needs. And building on that momentum, we released Llama 3 last year. Today, that's the world's most downloaded model on Hugging Face, with more than 1 billion downloads. And on top of that, there has been hundreds to thousands of derivative models, the most not notable one, perhaps DeepSeek. <coughs> um, that's more like, <coughs> that's also been, in some of them, been released back into the open source community. That fuels the innovation the open source momentum. <laughs> and the journey continues. With Llama 4, <clears throat> that's our first model that is designed to be multi-model. It implies it supports text, image, video, and audio, a true AI for all content type. <clears throat> and we introduced two variants. Um, they are 400 billion parameters based upon a mixture of experts. Um, that is very efficient for runtime uh, efficiency. We, and we are still pre-training the behemoth model of four trillion uh, models. <laughs> and this model has been trained on a corpus of 30 trillion tokens and more than 200 uh, languages, and including uh, a number of the key European languages. And that, makes, um, and that makes it a true worldwide uh, model. And here in Europe, um, this open uh, model strategy that drives incredible breakthroughs. In my home country, no Norway, LAMA fuels um, the national language model that is used for a number of different use cases. In London, um, XR designer Josephine Miller uses Segment Anything to revolutionize digital uh, fashion creation. And in Paris, um, a couple of startups is using DNOV2 to improve 
healthcare technologies, such as um, fetal heart defect detection, and to accelerate cancer treatment. And this truly shows the power of open innovation. So, um, with this in mind, um, let's switch gears and talk about what fuels this, the infrastructure. So what does it take to achieve AI at scale? It fundamentally <coughs> is based on four pillars. So you have compute, which is the raw horsepower. You have the networking that con connects hundreds to thousands, to hundreds of thousands of machines together. You have data, which is the essential fuel, which we can train the model on and infer knowledge out of. And you have software. All four are vital, but here at the Open Compute Project, we're going to focus on compute and networking. So basically, AI at scale, that has forced us at Meta to rethink the way we approach infrastructure. Prior to Llama, the largest clusters were a few hundred GPUs. As we started our Llama journey, we scaled uh, our cluster sizes from hundreds to thousands to tens of thousands, and now to more than over 100,000 of GPUs. And, and this trajectory, we believe, is going to continue to grow. Over the next five to six years, um, we will see, we believe we will see uh, a cluster increase of 10x, and computation increase measured in training flops, close to 10,000x. And this also drives tremendous opportunities for the rack scale system design. When we started the journey, um, the rack scale systems that we built were typically 15 kilowatt racks with maybe a few tens of GPUs. What we, what we see now is that we have racks in the hundreds kilowatts <coughs> with um, up to hundreds of GPUs. And that is fueled by silicon TDP that is go growing from a few hundred watts to 1,000 watts, tightly coupled and in interconnected scale-up domains, demonstrated by, for instance, NVLink or Universal Accelerator Link, UL. And uh, we see uh, this uh, rack skin architecture being consist co consisting of Lego blocks. <laughs> So you have top of the rack switches, you have rack management controllers, you have accelerator trays, switch trays, manifolds, power supplies, and interconnect backplanes. And all within a high power rack. And we started with maybe 100 kilowatts today, and that is quickly growing to 200, 300, 400. Last fall, we introduced our first verse notice, Catalina. Uh, that supports up to 72 GPUs and up to 140 kilowatt of power, all liquid cooled. And as we move on, we see that the path to a larger scale-up domain that is growing. So uh, what, what, what we see as a natural extension is that you move from single racks to double wide racks. And internally, we refer to that as RV or double V. And the typical physical footprint is 1200 by 1200 millimeter, which easily can be deployed in our data centers, but also external data centers. <clears throat> we see that the power will increase up to a megawatt. The scale-up domains that will increase to hundreds of accelerators together. <clears throat> and um, Last year, I mean, uh, high, uh, we also uh, introduced disaggregated power rack because powering, you know, high density racks as this, uh, we believe that high voltage power distribution is a key part. And through collaboration with our partners at Google and Microsoft, and through the Open Systems for AI initiative, we brought this to, to market. And we really would like to work with the community here to join us to drive these efforts forward. So also, let's, let's talk a little bit about networking. And 
So in order to connect uh, the massive amount of GPUs together, networking is, is a key part. And last fall, we also introduced um, our next generation scale-out fabric that based upon the disaggregated schedule fabric. And they, that is a fabric that is built for AI. It's lossless, it's predictable, it's low latency, and it's very scalable <laughs> within the data center, but also between data centers. Over time, we will see the benefits of that fabric will also uh, <laughs> transition over into next generation endpoints as manifested by the Ultra Ethernet Consortium, as an example. <clears throat> so leaving these great innovation at the system level aside for a moment, let me get back to the big picture. Fundamentally, openness that is the vehicle to drive innovation at a very fast pace. And that so, so far, that is working very well. PyTorch and Lava have set precedents for hope open frameworks and models serve a wider market. We are on a very good track with OCP, driving open hardware, open AR rack, disaggregated power racks, and standardized network in infrastructure. <clears throat> so what's the next frontier? We believe that is the silicon chips, the brain of these systems. With inno innovation and advanced packaging, compute density that will continue to increase. And that's enabled by integration of many chiplets onto larger substrates and silicon interposers. We will have chiplets for compute, networking, and memory, all integrated together. And through fostering open standards as open chiplet interfaces, networking, such as universal accelerator links, and open ISAS, the industry can continue to innovate at a very fast pace. So, <clears throat> to wrap this up, Meta believes and <clears throat> open AI that benefit all. It enhances our models, it improves the safety, we drive industry standards, and it helps us innovate at the infrastructure level. So please join us in shaping this open AI future together. By contributing to open projects, Llama, PyTorch, OCP, drive industry standards such as UIL, such as USC, such as RISC, and partner with us to develop next generation open silicon and infrastructure solution. And to us, openness isn't just our strategy, it's our commitment to the industry and the world. And we invite you all to join us. Thank you all, and I wish you all a great event.